Good morning, everybody. Today is January the 12th, and um, thank you for all the sweet messages this morning. Thank you for the kind comments. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for caring about me. And thank you for sharing um, what you loved about my daughter. Um, everybody loved Angela's smile. Everybody loved Angela's beautiful blue eyes. And today, January the 12th, 2023, is the 10th anniversary of her leaving this earth and being with Jesus. And it doesn't get any better than being with Jesus, but yes, do we miss her? Absolutely. We're going to show just a few pictures of her. And it's so weird. <clears throat> this morning I walked in and there was this stack of stuff here on my desk. And I, I couldn't remember where it came from, but now I do remember. It was stuff that was at my office at one time. And I'd given it to Tim to go through and sort and see if there was anything we could use. And in this I found a card. It says, thinking of you. And this is a long time ago. Sherry, I love your cookbook Freddie gave me for Christmas. We will enjoy all the recipes. Hope you have a very happy birthday. Best wishes, Loretta Brackett. Sherry, we love your show. That is so precious. And it I didn't know what this card was. And when I walked in this morning, Tim had just laid this stuff on here. And it also has, um, when we first came to ETC, it shows some stuff about us and was telling folks about us and what to expect. And what you have learned to expect from me is you never know what to expect. Because um, I told Sweet Roger folks the day that he hired me, I said, what you see is what you get. Today is going to be a good, positive day. We're going to try to change the lives of women who may be in danger. We're going to try to change the lives of people who may be battling depression. We're going to change the lives of people who may be hurting because that is what God commands us to do. We can be the helper, and we are going to do that today. So we're also, the ha last half of the show, you're going to be seeing that crazy Dwight Sanford and that very quiet, very subdued Marlon Brackett. But this is the event that's going to happen this Saturday night, January the 14th at 7 p.m. here in LJ at the George Link Theater or Playhouse. And um, they've already sold quite a few tickets, but there are still probably 30 left, 30 available. So please come out and be with them. Marlon writes his own music. These are his songs, his words about his life. And um, it's pretty cool if you can get it together and write about your life and it come out in a song. So pretty awesome. But again, this is Saturday night, and that is January the 14th at 7 p.m. and I hope you will be there. I hope you'll make plans. Today you're going to get to see something that's rare, rare footage because I was there as Mr. Sanford, Mr. Ella J. He's not Mr. Sanford, he's Mr. Ella J. sat down and played the drums. Now he told me he didn't play the piano. Y'all have seen him over here. I've got video of him playing the piano. He says he doesn't do this, he says he doesn't do that. Well, you're going to get to see him play the drums today. So it's going to be a fun day. We're going to go to a commercial break now, and um, we are going to show the photos of Angela, and, um, and we're going to share just a little bit of what we can do today in this world. I'm not the only person hurting. I'm not the only person who lost a child. So many people out there are struggling, and we're going we're gonna to see what we can do to make the struggles a little bit easier. And if you think about the song that we've done a million times by Dwight of the burdens, you know, that, that song about burdens, we all have burdens and we all have to carry them, but we can help each other. So let's go. Let's show the photos of Angela. And um, one more time, I want you to just sit back and think about this beautiful, beautiful young lady who battled depression and um, sadly, her life ended on January the 12th, 2013.
whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? United Country Talking Rock Realty says welcome to North Georgia. The leaves are falling and the mountains are calling. Take the back roads and really get to know North Georgia. Combine the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Yeah. Good morning. We're back. Okay. Sadness is gone. Happiness is here. We're going to talk about something very positive, making differences in lives. And I want you to meet a couple. Y'all introduce yourselves. My name is Kimberly Key. And I'm Zach. I, I'm... Uh, this is my wife. Yes, I know. Aren't you so proud of her? I'm excited. Yeah, I'm I glad she got to come with us today. And she's a redhead like my daughter would change her hair occasionally. I love your hair. <laughs> Angela would love your hair. So. Now, you've been in the area, what, a year and a half? Yes, ma'am. A year and a half. And you came here to make a difference in whose life? Your lives or somebody else's? Uh, yes. Yeah. Both? Both. <laughs> Both. Yeah. Both. Yeah. Uh, we've, uh, we've always had a connection to this area. Matter of fact, uh, about 12 years ago, we tried to move up here and it wasn't in God's plan. And he told us no and sent us where uh, where we didn't want to go. Right. And, and uh, we're not going to say that town, no, no, but no, I no. will tell y'all. We felt we fell <laughs> in love with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We yeah. have uh, actually lived there longer than we lived anywhere uh -huh. and uh, have some great friends and family in, in that area now. And uh, God uh, taught us a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing how he, he just kind of brings our life full circle and he knows what exactly what we need when we need it and uh, if we just trust his plan he has a way of uh, getting us where he wants us and you ended up in McKaysville now I can tell you in McKaysville the first time I was there I was 19 and then the next time I was there I was 40 something oh wow but y'all liked it enough to stay I went to visit one time and then I didn't go back for many many years you how did you land in McKaysville Oh wow! Um, you want the short or or the long? long? How did it happen? We were in a transition season, and just kind of asking God, where would you like us to go? What do you want us to do? We're an open book, you know. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. guys direct us, and one thing led to another, and, uh, and the door opened, and we just kind of walked in it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. followed. We felt like we were 
following God and his plan for our life. And the, Isn't that crazy? It was either McKaysville or Indiana. Yeah. I know, McKaysville. <laughs> so, yeah. well, I've like been the, to Indiana, McKaysville. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. And lakes. And lakes. Yes. And yeah. we got both. You got Adventure. both. Yeah, and you got a river. You got oh, a river yeah. thrown in there. We, yeah. We tube down the... Or is it Tacoa? Yeah, yeah. The or the time. Okoy when it switches. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, yeah. Tacoa is right in our backyard, so that is awesome. We just get the tubes, put them in, and yeah, just travel down. For now time. you joined a church that had struggled. Mm -hmm. The church had gotten to a point of um, 25 or so attending on yeah. Sundays, mm -hmm. and now you have almost 150. That's, yes, ma'am. That's awesome. What a difference! What growth! It, yeah. It's God. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Honestly. Um, you know, in, in life, we go through seasons. And organizations, churches, uh, we all face seasons. And, and, and I think one of the big things is to be able to identify what the season is. Um, the winter is a time of, of hibernation. It's a time of uh, survival. Spring is a time of growth. Mm -hmm. And uh, the church had, had really, it wasn't an unhealthy season. It was a season that it needed to go through. Um, and uh, it, we are now coming into a season uh, that is the spring season. And it's our, I mean, we, we get the pleasure of being able to, to ride that out. Uh, the people that came before us set the foundation for us to be able to see the success we're seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, so no slight on anybody that, that came before us. Uh, we're still in, in close contact with the former pastor. He's a good guy. He's come back and preached and, mm -hmm. and did phenomenal things, but he, and he's really set us up. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton has, uh, is, is credited to, to say, uh, if I'm able to see further than others, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and we live by that. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, tell me a little bit about your congregation, because I belong to a church. We don't have many young people. Do you have young people in your church? First off, they're crazy. Yeah, they're crazy. They're in all the, crazy. In the good kind of way. <laughs> yeah, uh, you and, love them. Yeah. You know, birds of a feather flock together. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. um, they, uh, they take after their, their, their pastor's wife. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we, so when we got there, there were two under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we decided we were going to do is we, um, we wanted to make an impact. And um, we like the, I, I come from a, from a uh, mentality of ministry uh, that is very similar to what MTV adopted many years ago. I grew up in the 90s, the MTV was mm -hmm. huge, mm -hmm. and they had a cradle to the grave mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our, our goal is to gain influence in the next generation, which honestly, they're the generation that's making waves now. Right. And um, we've got several things that's in our heart to do. Uh, we want to have an impact in our school system. We've got a great school system, great board of, uh, board of education, mm -hmm. uh, some, some people that are really invested in the lives of, of our community, and they're making a, a Fannin County is doing a, a, a lot of great things, along with a lot of other, Gilmer and, mm -hmm. and Union. Uh, we live in a great area of Georgia. Sure do. We really sure do. do. Now, have you ever questioned and said, God, you chose McKaysville? Really, you chose McKaysville? Did you know from the beginning that it was a fit? Uh, yes. Well, well it d that depends on, on where you... It wasn't love at first sight. Okay. But that love grew. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. scary at first it sight. It was. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we knew, we knew the things that we had asked God for and prayed for. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, here, I'll, I'll give you those things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it w didn't come without a lot of work. And, mm -hmm. And, um, we were actually told dedication. that we wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have a chance of, of pastoring in McKaysville because we were coming from an outside uh, state and uh, they're in North Georgia in our denomination. Uh, and for kind everybody, of, it, it's McKaysville Church of God. That's, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, so they they tend to pull from their pool of ministers, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of guys that are looking for places to go. And and honestly, uh, McKaysville's and Blue Ridge is a desirable area. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, it was just God mm -hmm. opening a door that no man can open. Mm -hmm. That exactly. we just kind of walk through. Yep. And yep. we're just in love and we hope we get to stay here a long, long time. Forever. The church yeah. knew what they were looking for. Uh, and I, I knew what we, we knew what we were looking for. And they I'm knew sure when, they knew what they were getting. <laughs> right, so, that's true. They said they, uh, they knew when we walked in the door and we knew when we walked out the door. Wow. And uh, I've never felt uh, 
like I fit like the way we do in McCabeville. It's a it's a beautiful community, mm -hmm. amazing eclectic group of people. Mm -hmm. It is, it and uh, it's it's growing. It's mm -hmm. growing. It's yeah. growing. It is. I'm going to actually be visiting Harbor Ministries there in a couple mm -hmm. of weeks oh, yeah. because mm -hmm. one of my co-hosts is going to be singing there. And um, I told y'all I've been to the Church of God for events that we would have at your, what do you call that center? That's Family next? Life Center. Okay, yeah. Right. And, and it's so cool. That yeah. is such an awesome place to do things. Yeah, yeah. it's a great yeah. building. We have a, uh, a travel volleyball team that meets there pretty much all week. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they use our facilities to play volleyball, to practice, to train. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a basketball, a community basketball team that meets there to do some conditioning and some training. So we're just trying to utilize it to the best of our ability. I tell you what you could do with that building. <laughs> old, ladies, <Tell> <laughs> old ladies who like to walk and don't like to mm -hmm. walk in the bad weather, True. you could just walk around in that building and you could get your steps in every right. day. So. Well, we've got a group of, we've got a group of ladies <laughs> that, uh, that meet there on Wednesdays. They're not the Red Hat ladies. Uh -huh. Some of them do belong to the Red Hat ladies, yeah. but yeah. they like to meet and, and they're a lot of fun. They yeah. are fun. Oh, yeah. they're, yeah. they're We like yeah. to eat, so yeah. in everything yeah. we do, we eat. We ain't meeting <laughs> if we ain't eating. That's no. right. <laughs> so they eat yeah. and they share God's word and pray for each other, and it's just an amazing group mm -hmm. of ladies, mm -hmm. just a lunch bunch. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's so important. Now, you fit in, you came here, but you want to you want to make it better. And oh, yeah. your shirts, tell me a little bit about what you represent. So uh, I'm a part of a organization that uh, is, is brand new started by a friend of mine that, that runs uh, City of Refuge in Atlanta. It's in one of the worst districts of, of, of Atlanta. Matter of fact, 60% of all murders in, in Atlanta happens in their zip code. Three, I wow. believe it's 30314. Mm -hmm. And they have a facility there, uh, City of Refuge and House of Cherith, where they are rescuing people off of the streets and doing some amazing life-changing uh, things and one of the one of the areas that they're that they're impacting is the um, human trafficking arena and mm -hmm. and you and I were talking earlier and people here honestly half of our audience can't even can't even think about how right. that could happen yeah. Yeah. but there are daughters here sixth graders that somebody online yeah. is looking at taking yeah. so mm -hmm. the target uh, the target rate area is um, 15 for young girls and younger for young boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bruce has him and his daughter Kelsey, who runs House of Cherith, they have the largest uh, facility of reconciling these women that have been rescued out of this, out of this, I think it's 80 beds, which is, which is sad when you think that it's the largest in our, in our country, but mm -hmm. they do a great job down there and making an impact. And uh, we were asked a year ago about putting together putting this group together uh, the pitch was hey listen uh, men are 99 percent of the consumers of, of sex trafficking mm -hmm. and if we can fix it with men we'll mm -hmm. eliminate the uh, the demand and you know supply and demand is right. what drives culture uh, uh, economies and and our our goal is not just to uh, put a band-aid on it but we want to eradicate it and right. so uh, we've partnered with some pretty awesome individuals. Uh, Blaine Boyer, who used to pitch uh, for the Braves out of the bullpen, and Adam LaRoche, who used to play first base for the Braves. Phenomenal guys. Um, got together back in December with a bunch of folks in Kansas to really uh, come together and, 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 and educate and uh, recruit to, to help us really eradicate this. Mm -hmm. And it's happening everywhere. 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 You know, um, I owned a trucking company for 38 years. My husband and I were in the trucking business because he, he actually lost his job and ended up, he said, good news, bad news, lost my job today, but we're going to buy a truck. We're going to start a trucking company. And I'm like, That's really not good news. But, but we watched something on YouTube the other day where a, a long distance trucker had over 10,000 pieces of pornography found in his wow. vehicle after he abducted a woman and tried yeah. to kill her. Wow. And after rape and killing her. I mean, this was, and mm. this was a long distance trucker. He was an old geezer. He was just yep. an old man. And you just think about that. But they said the thing that he hit on was children. Yeah. Children. One in six kids are going to be targeted online. Yeah. That's crazy. So how do we protect our children? 
who are online and who think, oh, that guy sounds so nice and I want to meet him. No, yeah. you don't. No, you don't. No, we have to put up guardrails. Yeah. yeah. And we can't, let, mm -hmm. we can't let Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and TikTok, we can't let those things uh, babysit our kids. Mm -hmm. We've got mm -hmm. to, uh, we have, a, we have a, something that we say a lot and we talk about the covenant of the table. And uh, we see it, you see it represented throughout the Word of God uh, of that the table was the place where covenants were made. And um, we believe that one of the things that has really hurt our, our society is uh, families aren't doing dinner together anymore. And it's They're been not a sitting big thing. Tables. Exactly. All my life, I set the table, I want to use the nice dishes, I mm -hmm. want the kids to sit down, and mm -hmm. let's have family time. Right. And we did that for a long, long time, but we have gotten away from that. Everybody's running through a drive through grabbing a meal, like throwing it in the so back busy. seat. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. know that social media is not going away. Mm -hmm. You know, we do use our cell phones for our older kids who um, are going. We have one who's driving mm -hmm. and one who's off doing sports. Mm -hmm. And so we keep track of them, but we really teach them balance. You know, mm -hmm. this yeah. is not something that should consume your life. It's a tool. We use it. Uh, for the good, but you've got to be careful and watch out for this. So we try to, we are heavily involved yeah. in, mm -hmm. in our kids' lives. We just don't, you know, say here's a cell phone, you know. One of the first conversations them. we had <laughs> was uh, defining what moderation is mm -hmm. and defining what appropriate means. Because mm -hmm. there are things that may be appropriate in one context that is not appropriate in another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, to teach that to a, a second grader is, is a little difficult, but yeah. Uh, our son was playing, uh, playing travel ball, and I asked him. Uh, he's a very literal uh, guy. We have a lot of. Uh, we pr really pray God send broken people into our lives. Uh, we we believe that that's where a lot of the impact takes place. Uh, we take literal the words of of Paul when he talks about that we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. We're mm -hmm. ambassadors, and so we we bring people into our home, and they see us on our good days and on our bad days, mm -hmm. but they see us love God through both mm -hmm. and uh, we had a guy come in that had a meal with us and he got up and went outside to go smoke a cigarette and uh, our son come running in from outside saying he was little at the time daddy that daddy <laughs> that man smoking a cigarette he, he, and it was like okay and he says but he's smoking and we we're like <laughs> that's oh, like he's gonna die he's gonna die because he had yeah, been told at little. school Smoking, yeah. kills smoking you. Yeah. will kill you, <laughs> yeah. and, which is true. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, we had to we had to teach him about appropriate. And I said, Logan, um, what happens if you are late for your class, and you start running from one class to the other? Oh, Miss Lisa's going to get on to me. She's going. She, I'm, I may have to stand on the wall during recess. <laughs> okay, okay. And he just went on and on and on. And I said, okay, wait. So what happens if you go to baseball practice this evening, and uh, you hit the ball? and you put the bat down very slowly and you walk to first base. Oh, Coach Jordy's gonna make me run laps. And, and uh, we thank God for his coach. We had some really godly men that, were, uh, that poured into him on the baseball field. And I said, well, well, wait a minute. So you're telling me that you'll get in trouble for running here, but you'll get in trouble for not running here. Mm -hmm. Is running bad? Mm -hmm. And you could just see the, yeah. the wheels yeah. turning. He was like, yeah. I don't know. I said, it's appropriate. Yeah. That's what appropriate means. And what may be appropriate here is not appropriate here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the approach we take. And, you know, we, uh, we utilize social media. I, I don't think, I think we, if we were to put our head in the sand and say, oh, we're yeah. going to ignore it, mm -hmm. right, you can't. Uh, we're going to hamstring ourselves. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh, but saying, okay, this is what moderation looks like. Mm -hmm. And this is when it is appropriate. And this, this is what is not appropriate. Don't allow somebody to to solicit information from you mm -hmm. uh, outside of of kids coming from broken situations the number one demographic that's targeted is my kids mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they feel like they're insulated and it won't ever happen to them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we as a church and as a community got to realize listen Atlanta is usually number one in the world right for human trafficking our area that's crazy and that means that and I said, follow the money, and you gave oh, me yeah. a figure that was $99 billion. Worldwide. Mm -hmm. $99 yeah. billion dollars is spent on, on yeah. things that should never happen. 
they say more money is spent on uh, human trafficking in the U.S. than than the purchase of illegal guns and narcotics drugs uh, combined. Combined. Yeah. Wow. It is the fastest wow. growing economy or or um, industry in the in the world. That's crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Well, we. It's, it's not good to say we have a sick society, but we have a sick society. Yeah. Because if, if a man like that trucker who, you know, he actually died in prison, which was a good thing, it saved the state some money. But um, he was an old mm -hmm. geezer that looked like somebody's yeah. grandpa. Yeah, yeah. 10,000 yeah. different things. And they said that he focused on young children, but then he had abducted women. Yeah. And he had this collection of their bloody underclothes in his Gosh. truck. This is a long distance trucker. Yeah. Now that's that's the guy that you think, oh, yeah. hey bud, yeah. how you doing? You know, you getting you some diesel, you going to Indiana, da 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 da. And all the time his truck carried all these mm. sad, sick secrets. Yeah. It's you, you you never know who the predators are. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And and that's the that's the place that we're living in. And I, I think one of the things that makes it so easy for people like that, because the reality is, is they're broken too, mm -hmm. and and there's they may be sick, but sickness, if if treated, is not is not lethal. I mean, mm -mm, mm -mm. W the right antibiotics, the right prescription, can heal sickness, and and I believe that that the church has a healthy church has mm -hmm. what it takes to to bring health. The the our problem is is that we don't. It's, human trafficking is so ugly, and it. It means that if we get involved in that arena, it, it we're means admitting it's a problem. Number one, right? And and it's dirty, mm -hmm. it's messy. Mm -hmm. and it's messy, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are are too comfortable. One of the things I'm so proud of with the state of Georgia, um, David and Cherie Ralston were very instrumental in getting mental health funding yeah. put back into the budget. For years, they cut the budget, and I know people who'd worked in the industry 17 years, and then their jobs were cut because mental health lost funding. Yeah. We have got to take care of, if you're telling me there are 80 beds in Fulton County where somebody has been in an abusive situation, you can't just fix that person. Right. They need mental counseling. Yeah. The rescuing out of the sex trafficking and, and the human trafficking is, is just the first and, oh, and yeah. sometimes the easiest step. Yeah. The, the reconciliation and the reintegration back into society uh, and, and to be a healthy member of society is, is really the, the hardest part. You think about a 15 year old who's been in that situation even for three months, six months, whatever, and then yeah. you say you're going home to your family, well, she'll never trust anybody again, including right. her parents, her brother, her step, you know, whatever. She'll never trust anybody again. They, uh, one of the methods that's used by, by these uh, Predators is uh, well, well, there's a lot of a lot of different methods, but they they attack them socially. They they almost develop a Stockholm syndrome. It's, I, I read a statistic on our way over as I was uh, uh, refamiliarizing myself with with the most current stuff. It says one out of every four uh, women that is rescued out of human trafficking will go back into it because they don't have a normal. support mm -hmm. and they yeah. don't they don't have a place mm -hmm. where they feel like they mm -hmm. fit and that is that, to me that's tragic mm -hmm. one of the greatest promises that god gives us in, <coughs> in psalm 68 6 it says that god places the lonely in families mm -hmm. and churches need to quit being and i'm sorry i'm gonna this is my this is my so soapbox much. but <laughs> churches need, need to quit being organizations mm -hmm. and it needs mm -hmm. to become families again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and I'm not talking about being run by families I'm talking about it being doing life together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it needs to be that family that that these people are that are hurting and broken can come to and find a place to belong mm -hmm. because a place to belong is is one of the greatest uh, greatest steps and one of the greatest can be one of the greatest hindrances of of reintegrating these these victims back in into a healthy society. Mm -hmm. So important. Now tell me about okay. your shirt. So my shirt says "Buy a Tree, Change a Life," mm -hmm. and it is a movement movement that we are a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, that so we sell Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
every Christmas. Mm -hmm. We will get around 150 to 200 Christmas trees and we partner with businesses in the community to help sponsor and to raise money for children locally and globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 100% of the proceeds is given away. Everything that comes in, it goes back out. So 50% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. will go locally to an uh, to a organization we partner with mm -hmm. to help children and then 50% will go globally to help with our global partners. Mm -hmm. and so it's really, awesome. it's really cool just seeing the community come together and um, ask me some specific questions about it. Okay, <laughs> when, when you started this idea, was it just we need to raise money? Okay, for, so we... Was it about money or came, was it about awareness? Um, we came into this organization or movement about six years ago. Mm -hmm. It was started in 2012 by, some by friends a family, of ours. A friends of ours in mm -hmm. um, Florida mm -hmm. who were trying to raise money for their friends to adopt uh, a child. So there was a purpose. Yes. Was a purpose. In the beginning, yeah. so there it, was a purpose. It grew from that. They raised $25,000, saw that it was uh, an amazing thing that happened. This mm -hmm. family was able to adopt a child. The and sibling of a, of a child that they had already adopted. It was a wow. postcard family, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. yeah. And um, so from there it grew and more people started to say, oh, this is a good thing that's happening. Um, and it just grew. Many, so this past year we had almost 70 uh, organizations across the United States mm -hmm. from Bend, Oregon to Maine to North Dakota, I mean everywhere, to Mobile, like it's, mm -hmm. we're just all over the place. And these organizations come together to raise money. Some sites are able to raise lots and lots of money mm -hmm. and then, but we're all part of the same organization, whether we raise a couple thousand mm -hmm. or hundreds of thousands of dollars, it all goes to the same place. Right. And we are just making a difference. We will uh, this year we partnered with Boys and Girls Clubs of Copper Basin, and so 50% of what our a, proceeds and that is a will great go to them and help to oh, yeah. buy them That's Christmas great, this year, yeah, yeah. this past year, and then 50% <coughs> will go to our global partner, People for Care and Learning, and they help, we have many. Um, they're actually kind of, they run in tandem, kind of parallel with this organization. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're in Cambodia, and, and Southeast Asia <coughs> is a hotbed for human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's because there are so many kids that are just abandoned. Um, about three or four years ago, uh, one of the first girls that uh, People for Care and Learning rescued off of the streets. So what they're doing in, in Southeast Asia is they're going in and they're building orphanages, schools, uh, self-sustaining villages, teaching trade, uh, whether it be farming, uh, mechanic uh, work, um, giving them something that they can do with their hands to be a c contributor to society. Mm -hmm. But one of the first girls that they rescued, her name was So Paul, and statistically, she was destined to end up being sex trafficked. Uh, they rescued her off the streets. Now this is a 98, 99 percent Buddhist uh, country. Mm -hmm. This is a Christian organization that is not. It's an organization that does the work of of, of the church, but it is. Uh, it, I don't necessarily think that it's considered a Christian organization, but it's run by, by believers. Right. And um, they rescued this girl, <coughs> and instead of being sex trafficked, she graduated with her MD. Wow. So think of the trajectory change, right? Oh, yeah. She goes from potentially being trafficked, being someone's slave, mm -hmm. to now she's a doctor. Mm -hmm. And she's moved back home, and she's <coughs> helping to give uh, medical relief to not only the the orphanage and the boys and girls home down there but also her community wow. and it's just uh and so and we know the the people who started this specific they're good friends of ours mm -hmm. we've been to their house uh we've known them before we we ever got involved it is one of the best run organizations we've ever been a part of 100 percent of funds that's raised is given back away administrative cost is taken care of by specific donors mm -hmm. uh, and 100 percent of the funds and and that for us that matters yeah. Mm -hmm. oh yeah uh, absolutely so where we lived before uh, we moved to mckaysville we we had had done biotry change of life for about f four years mm -hmm. and we were the community knew about it we were partnering with chamber of commerce other businesses our board of directors was made up of not just people that were inside of our church but people in the community mm -hmm. right. so we were really starting to see it get some traction in the community and lo and behold god moved us <laughs> somewhere and so he does have we've, a sense of humor. we've had been here we've done by a tree in mckaysville for two years and the many businesses have partnered with us and given to this movement uh, we're still seeing some traction getting going, but we want to get the word out and tell mm -hmm. people about 
what we're doing uh, just to let people know how they can help and give back to their community. What does the Christmas tree cost? Oh, an arm and a leg. So yeah. we have a base price for mm -hmm. the Christmas trees because, mm -hmm. you know, you've You've got to raise some money, right? And but we we encourage each person who comes to buy a tree to to give above and beyond mm -hmm. the yeah. cost of the tree because it's going for a great, right? Yeah, a great yeah. cause. And and what a neat thing if you even if you just do it in honor or in memory of somebody. Oh, that was the beautiful thing. The you first know. the first year we did this, 2016, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, social media, of course, it, it's a double edged sword, but. Uh, I got on social media and, because we were trying to gain traction and, and the first year we did it, we weren't as successful. You, you know, you go into something uh, bright eyed and, and mm -hmm. thinking that, oh, yeah. that you're going to raise a million dollars and change yeah. the world. <laughs> yep. And I think we were able to give away like $1,500 mm -hmm. and, and hoping that you give away. $1,500 is more than many people do in their whole mm -hmm. lifetime, though. Right. So think about that. But we went in thinking, okay, yeah. we're going to give $15,000, right. 20000 yeah. we we yeah. It's a great yeah. organization, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, but something, something beautiful took place. Now, if you remember back 2016, there was a, a movement that was really trying to bring a divide in our society mm -hmm. and, and cast a bad light, mm -hmm. especially on our police officers. Mm -hmm. And and I know that there may be a, a couple bad apples out there, but these guys, they put their life on the line mm -hmm. for us every, every, day. Day. every day. Our daughter is actually uh, part of the sheriff's department uh, up in Clarksville. And uh, so we have a very special place in our heart for, mm -hmm. for our law enforcement and our servicemen and women. Um, so I got on Facebook, it was my birthday, and I said, hey, I want to I wanna sell 36 <laughs> trees, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I know. Uh, <laughs> But they don't know this, <laughs> right? Like I'm 59 again. Yeah. Right, and, and hold. I'm 59 again. I said I want to sell 36 trees for my birthday. I turned 36 this year, and uh, lo and behold, we started getting phone calls from California, from Texas, from Tennessee, like Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, Maine, like six, seven, eight different states saying, "Hey, we want to buy a tree," mm -hmm. but obviously we're not going to drive from Tennessee to come get a Christmas tree. Now we have. The last year we sent three trees to Miami, yeah. which is crazy. crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm down thinking, <laughs> top of their car, they were I'm going thinking, down the interstate. By the time you get to Miami, the, the no needles, <laughs> it's going to look like a Charlie Brown tree, right? Yeah, yeah. So back to 2016, we, uh, we had these trees and they were saying, we're not coming to get the tree, so find a, a family in the community that can't afford That's it. That's awesome. And what happened from that, from that point on was uh, something that we – that we've adopted called with reach and a lot of churches do outreach they do they reach out into the community mm -hmm. I think the better method is finding groups that are already impacting the community and say hey let's let's partner with you mm -hmm. so we were giving away trees to families we were she was a teaching at the elementary school I was um, mentoring at the elementary school and, and coaching baseball and doing so we had a we had our finger on the pulse of our community mm -hmm. and, and knew the families that, so we had what, 15, 16 trees to give away. Mm -hmm. That's and awesome. I go in and I chase, we had a brand new police chief come in and he had, he had a mission that he felt like God put in his heart to really change the view of the community towards and, and repair the relationship of the police department, Get it, getting it back to protecting and serving and mm -hmm. not just law enforcement. Mm -hmm. and. I'd been chasing him down. I think he thought I wanted him to help me with a speeding ticket or something because he kept <laughs> dodging me. I finally caught him going into the police department and he knew I saw him and yeah. he couldn't he couldn't hide. So yeah. I go in right behind him and I said, the, the receptionist said, Mr. Key, can we help you? I said, yeah, I need to see him. And uh, she said, Chief, do you, have, do you have a moment? And he was like, yeah, send him in. And just... <laughs> I got this impression from him that I was bothering him, yeah, right? Yeah. And I sit down and I say, Chief, <clears throat> now I, I've, I'm a bit of a salesman. I, I've, I used to sell, uh, I was in, in sales before I went into the, came into the ministry, so I got a little bit of experience of, of, of putting something out there and making it attractive. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was election year, yeah. and I knew our sheriff was up for election. Yeah. And I was talking to the police chief, and there was a little bit of a friendly competition between yeah, the two yeah, departments. Yeah. And I sat down and said, Chief, I've got a problem. What is it, Pastor? I said, I'm the pastor down at, at this church right down the road, and I don't like the way that you, the light that has been cast on you guys. And I think our community misunderstands you, and I want to help change that. 
So here's what we've got. Last year, we had about 15 or so trees that we were asked to give away. And we raised this money, and I, I laid out the, the whole plan of, of this organization. And I said, I don't need you or your officers to escort us into the, into the shady areas of our community mm -hmm. because I have relationships with those families. We, my wife teaches. Mm -hmm. I know them. They call me coach. They didn't, call, they, they didn't even know me as pastor. They knew mm -hmm. me as coach, mm -hmm. which was beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. uh, these kids come running up to you in the elementary school saying, Coach Zach, Coach Zach. Uh, and uh, I said, I don't need you to go with us for safety because I can go anywhere in our, our town mm -hmm. that I want because of the relationships. But I'm tired of you guys being viewed in, in the light that you've been viewed in. And I want to see, I want our kids to see your officers as a friend, mm -hmm. somebody that's, that's protecting them. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if they are available, uh, and if I call and say, hey, we've got a tree, and you guys are available, I'd love for them to come uh, yeah, deliver the tree. Yeah. And that created a, like, but by the time I left his office, he said, hey, can you pray for my mom? He, he's like three times my size. Mm -hmm. Just a big, big guy. Mm -hmm. And he gives like the best hugs because you just mm -hmm. get swallowed. <laughs> he, he actually called me um, or texted me Monday night, and we still have this relationship. Uh, he says, how about them dogs, right? <laughs> and yeah. I, I said, chief, they look real good. But for us, the church, that's why we do this. Mm -hmm. uh, we always cook at the tent. So oh, we yeah. We have ribs or mm -hmm. Boston buds. So the, the police officers on duty would always come by. And yeah, yeah. We're talking yeah. about cooking over there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we yeah, yeah, would yeah. feed them. Like, and they would hang out at the tent. <laughs> it yeah, it yeah. built community. Yeah. Right. right. And sure there, were, there were connections we had made in our community. Uh, one of the churches, one of the Sunday school cl classes found out what we were doing. They said, hey, what good is a tree without decorations? Mm -hmm. Can our Sunday school class buy decorations for the trees? Mm -hmm. Just let us know. How cool is that? And, and yeah. then uh, some friends of ours over at the Methodist Church said, hey, um, what good is a tree without some presents? Mm -hmm. So it may not be much, but we can put something under. And what happened is a community came together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have story after story. Oh, yeah. It's not just about the trees. Mm -hmm. We have seen people come into our tent and our a tree when we do it. It's only two or three weeks long, but mm -hmm. the, the amount of people that we can touch mm -hmm. and have yeah. conversations with and build relations with relationships with that last Forever. lifetime. Yeah. 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 And that that I think creates the so by a tree is a, a vehicle, an avenue mm -hmm. that we use to touch the world. Mm -hmm. Not just the world, but God brings people in. And you have to be willing to slow down mm -hmm. to listen to someone's mm -hmm. story and to mm -hmm. hear yeah. what's going on so that you know how to minister to them, how to help them. Right. You just There's never know. One of the things that happened in my daughter's lifetime, we opened her house to the public and we had yeah. mm -hmm. over 50 Christmas trees. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we decorated the house and invited people in and people would show up at the door and say, how much do you charge to come through your house? And we're like, nothing. And yeah. so people started bringing her gifts mm -hmm. like uh, antique ornaments and just beautiful oh, wow. things. And it was people who came year after year, and she said, just before she died, she said, you know, she said, look at all these amazing things that just opening our yeah. door brought, and mm -hmm. all these relationships with older people who said, you know, my children don't care anything about these beautiful antique ornaments, but I know that you will treasure them. And it was just, it's amazing when you open a door, yeah. when you just open a door. And I know you're a woman of faith, and, and uh, just, I, this is the first time we've had opportunity to meet you. By the way, it's... Thank you so much for letting us come. Yes, yes. Uh, if we aren't careful, we let small things divide us. Mm -hmm. And if there's one thing that we can rally around, if there's, if there's, now I know there are closed-handed issues that aren't up for debate. And, mm -hmm. and for some of us, those closed-handed issues are <laughs> different. But let's not let the small things. Mm -hmm. And if we can come together, especially about kids, Mm -hmm. in rescuing and mm -hmm. intervening in kids' lives. Right. I don't know of anybody that can't get on that, on, on that, you know, on board with that plan. Absolutely. And uh, we want, we just want to see community. Mm -hmm. And that's where the table comes back in. Mm -hmm. You know, the table is a place of community. It's a place of building relationships. Right. And and conversation. And I love the fact that we got a table here. People yeah, are getting better at conversating. When, when I got this table 17 years ago, I said, I looked everywhere in the world, and I said, I want a table that will be comfortable on all sides, that people can look at each other, address each mm. other, but then at the same time, pretend that there aren't all these cameras going, yeah. there aren't all these people watching, and that we can just fellowship. And that's what it's always done. You mean there's people watching you right now? 
Yeah, just oh, a few. <laughs> I just got nervous. <laughs> yeah. I just got nervous. Yeah, and speaking of, uh, congratulations to Linda Harris, who is getting a shirt for my birthday. I did a little giveaway the other day, and she had to remember some music. And right now, we're going to go to some music called Jesus Called, because they're so, uh-oh, wait a minute. We got a, I got a, uh-oh, we got a problem. <laughs> Houston, we've got a problem. So, can we go to another song, Trace? Are we having a problem there, too? Okay, let's see. That, that's the one thing about doing live TV. We never know where we're going next. Amazing Grace. Okay, that's a great one. Here we go. So we, we do want to share a little music with you. And if you will remember some of the conversation today, tonight on Facebook, I'm going to do a little trivia. And I'm going to ask you to tell me what their shirts say. And then I'm going to give away another shirt, but it's going to be a Mr. LJ shirt tonight because we want to welcome everybody to come out to the concert on Saturday night. And again, this is the Marlon Brackett show, but Mr. LJ will be there. And um, we're going to show a little bit of the footage when they were here a couple of weeks ago when we come back from this song, so hang tight. But y'all aren't leaving. We're going to show a little bit of them. Okay. We're going to hang tight. We're going to let y'all sign off with us. So. So anyway, we're going to take you to Amazing Grace, and this is uh, done by Mr. L. J. himself, Dwight Sanford, and uh, today, God has shown Amazing Grace, or I would not have been able to make it through today. Today is the 10th anniversary, and uh, would I bring my child back? Absolutely not. Would you leave heaven to come here? Are you kidding me? So here we go. Great.
little tribute there to Jerry Lee. And uh, what's that one, that one you do called, uh, uh, the one, uh, uh, oh gosh, I can't think Back of that. Back in Memphis. No, the one that's like it. What is it? Carnival Blues. Yeah, Carnival Blues. That's you wrote it, didn't yeah, I did. you? That's a good song. Tell us about it. Well, it's. Uh, I keep uh, saying that I, I want to get uh, sell the movie rights to that song. Yeah, it's got a lot of characters, and it, it, it takes you on a, a journey. And uh, uh, the the main character is the dynamite juggler in the local three ring. I love it. And, uh, so it's a fun song, and we, we have fun with it. Yeah, I know. I love it. We think we may need an ambulance in here. I don't know if everything's okay. <laughs> is, is there some paramedics anywhere close? Something may be wrong with Sherry here. <laughs> God, she, she's not talking. <laughs> What's going on? Because we've you, got are you... a bet. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a bet. Sherry's carry... got a problem. I, <clears throat> I bet that he can carry the show if I just sit here and swallow a cough drop. <laughs> 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 you get to do it today, big boy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's it. all mine. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm Johnny Mr. Carson Mr. today. Day, yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah, it's Mr. <laughs> LJ Day. Anyway, anyway, that was really funny. But I'm funny anyway. Mm -hmm. I know. But look, seen everything. Yeah. I know. But uh, seriously, we got uh, we got Marlon. Marlon, where'd you grow up? You grew up in Marietta, didn't you? Grew up in Marietta and um, uh, graduated Sprayberry High School down there in Marietta and got married young and uh, spent my life working as a carpenter and I'm a builder and I build up here in the LJ area, but, uh, but music's always been part of my life. Yeah. What inspired you? What got you interested in music in the very beginning? Well, my dad. My dad played, and uh, he was a big influence. But So my dad played, and then the music he listened to, like Jimmy Rogers and Hank yeah. Williams Sr. and all that old stuff. But dad could play for 10, 12 hours and not do the same song twice. How about that? He, he knew more songs than any yeah. one person that, that I've ever met. Gosh, and, uh, that's great. And, so he was he was a big influence on my music. And yeah, I wouldn't have been playing if it hadn't been for him. Yeah, I struggled to hear it, and and he just hung with me and helped me and helped me get there. So, well, great story. Did he uh, was he originally from down around Marietta? No, he was actually born in Anderson, South Carolina, and uh, his dad worked in cotton mills and they wound up in South Georgia and Thomaston and that's where he met my mom and uh, they got married and then they moved to Marietta and he got a job at Dobbins Air Force Base and yep. spent his career there. So that's played great. with a lot of folks around there. What a story. Well you've sure written some good songs and uh, what's your favorite one that you've written yourself? Mine's Bosom of Abraham but I always seem to like the song that nobody else sent. My song I wrote that I love never got much recognition from anybody else. So what is your favorite song that you, you know, did? You know, I get a lot of uh, response out of different ones, and it's, it's always different in the room you're playing uh, because one song will touch somebody on this side of the room and, and another one will touch somebody on the other side. And it's all got to do with just an emotional connection yeah. of what people are, where they are and where they've been. And, and it's amazing how our, all of our journeys crisscross uh, very similar paths. And, and so, so there's different things that affect different folks. But Bosom is a, one of my favorite and uh, one I wrote for my sister, Little Silver. And, um, oh, yeah. I mean, uh, so there, there's a few that... Uh, but I just enjoy being able to deliver them as uh, together. Okay, you got to see a little bit of Dwight. You got to hear a little bit of song from Mr. Ella J. And I'm going to remind you one more time, this is Saturday night at 7 o'clock. So come out and be there. And I hope that you will show up and support uh, Mr. Brackett. This is his first, first actual concert, I think, there. So... All right, guys, we got about two and a half minutes for you to tell me why you want people to visit the Church of God in McKaysville. Oh, wow. Uh, and about the organization and how much money they've raised. So you want to talk with, about the organization? Okay, we'll start with Biotree. Um, we just wanted to say and just 
give God the glory for over the past 10 years, uh, the organization we've raised uh, over six million dollars. It's amazing to, to give, give away. To give to away, give away. Yeah. both locally and globally to children. To Impacting kids' lives. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so That's what amazing. it's about. That yeah. is yeah. literally what it's about. Now invite people to your church. So I'm I'm going to be a little bit different here. Okay. Uh, you are told not to come. <laughs> our church yeah. isn't for everybody. Okay. But there is a church out there for for everybody. Right. And uh, our our heart is to reach broken people. Mm -hmm. And if that's if 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 that's where your heart aligns, uh, if, if you have a heart to really make an impact in the community and to change people's lives who have been forgotten, mm -hmm. uh, then there's a place for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're not going to church, there's enough churches around here that we can fill them up. Oh, absolutely. And they have a purpose and they have a place. Mm -hmm. And it takes the entire body being the body. <clears throat> and so find a place to get involved. Mm -hmm. It is the greatest impact anyone could ever make. Right. Uh, is kingdom. Our focus is restoring families, mm -hmm. yep. turning mm -hmm. the hearts of families to God and back to each other. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's our that's our vision. Specifically, awesome. we want to we want to we want to fix men mm -hmm. because if we can fix men, I think we can fix families. Mm -hmm. And if we fix families, we'll fix churches, and churches will fix communities, and communities will fix our nation. That's right. And and again, the organization is men, men opposing sex trafficking. Okay. Men are the number one consumers, and if we can eliminate the demand. Mm -hmm. uh, we can el eliminate the industry. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. That is crazy. And, and it was like that story we watched with the trucker. I'm like, you know, and I didn't know what they would find in his vehicle, but when they said yeah. it was mostly child pornography. Yeah. And you're like, that is, that is, that's a crazy world we're in. Yeah. Yep. Well, thank you for doing what you do. And y'all have thank to come so back. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh, we will. Y'all have to come back and mm -hmm. we'll do it again. And Listen, again this has and felt again. like home. So. Yeah. Tell me what kind of music your church plays. We do a mixture of hymns. Mm -hmm. When I say hymns, we mean like. You know what Love Lifted Me is? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Love Lifted Me is yeah. like this song that just, oh. And Christ Alone. So it's a mixture of new stuff that just came out, mm -hmm. some old stuff from 30 years mm -hmm. ago, mm -hmm. or some really old stuff. So like it's a really mixture. Yeah, yeah, I like the really yeah. old stuff. Yeah, yeah that's I like my the heart. really old yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's something about our viewers. Our viewers, we have the greatest viewers in the world, and they all have different talents. Many of them can play the piano, many of them yeah. can play the guitar, many of them, but they all, you get them all together and you say, we're gonna sing Amazing Grace. Right. We're gonna sing In the Garden. They all know those yeah. songs, and those, mm -hmm. are the, those are the songs that hold us together. I have, so. the, I have the, the biggest burden every week so she leads our, our praise and worship. She does mm -hmm. a phenomenal job, her and her team. Mm -hmm. And I have to get up every Sunday and say, okay, guys, we put the best up front. Now, now you, you have to put up with me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. They really do a great job. Yeah, say so we are yeah. eclectic. Yeah. We have Very a eclectic. plethora of songs that uh -huh. we do. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. We have one guy that's trying to get her to rewrite uh, and make it a Christian. What, mm -hmm. what song? It's the uh, Benny, Benny and, and the, the Jets. Jets. He oh said, my gosh. Can we, <laughs> can we just rewrite that? that and make that a Christian song? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So. Sure we will. I told you we have some eclectic people. That's right. Yeah. Well, tell people where your church is. We've got about thirty seconds. It's as you're coming into McKaysville on uh, Blue Ridge uh, Blue Ridge Drive. It's right there at the top of the hill, and uh, near the funeral home. Right across, across, across the road. Across the street. Yeah. If y'all are cruising by, and want to see who's in the funeral home, and you're looking to say whose car is that, just look to the right. Yeah. There's the church. There Absolutely. <laughs> so there, there we are. Go. Thank you for being here thank today. Thank you so much. Y'all, thank you for supporting me and loving me, and thank you for helping me get through today. Today is going to be a good day. It's going to be a better day tomorrow because tomorrow, once again, I turn 59. I'll be darned. I'm doing it again. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It is just Sherry Martin, and uh, join us on YouTube. You can catch any of our programs on YouTube 24-7. I'll see you again soon, only on ETC.